I think it's important that we're here today to talk about North Carolina tax reform because it affects a lot of businesses, affects a lot of individuals, and a lot of people want to know the answer to the question, how is this going to be good for me? Is it going to be good for me? Is it going to be good for the state? Well, the idea for this conference was to bring together different people that are interested in tax and to think about North Carolina's recent tax changes. So these people would include both accountants, economists, people from the business community, legislators and lawyers, because all these parties get involved in taxes, but they sometimes don't speak to one another. We're getting opportunities in the pipeline now that North Carolina just did not get a few years ago. So we were trying to figure out why North Carolina was lagging so far behind a number of what I would consider to be our peer states. And then it was digging down into, was it a regulatory burden? Was it a tax burden? Was it a combination thereof? And then let that be instructive to policy that really drove our reg reform and ultimately our tax reform. One of the major reasons for tax reform was to incentivize companies to come to North Carolina, lower rates, broaden the base, and make the tax more simple. Tax reform isn't just about lower tax rates, it's also about changing the tax code to make compliance easier. If you talk to small businesses, they certainly struggle with the costs and the complexity of the tax code. So to be able to make a tax code that is more efficient and less of a burden on small businesses is going to be one less thing they have to worry about among many, many things they have to worry about. Individual income tax reform definitely impacts business. At Tanger, it has a pretty big impact to our business because we don't pay a lot of corporate income tax. So all of the income that we earn gets passed out to our shareholders and to our owners. And so when the individual income tax rate decreases, it decreases that tax liability that they would have and that they would incur. And I believe that when the taxpayer retains more of their hard-earned dollars, they're able to put them back to work in the economies that they live in and work in. North Carolina has gone from trying to attract companies that maybe want to locate into the southeast only to really looking and trying to uh, compete with the biggest players out there for major corporate headquarters, major manufacturing facilities. People tend to gravitate to places where they can be successful, uh, where they have opportunity. And so in many respects, uh, what state government can do is impact those sorts of things. Now, you just need to make sure that we have a state budget that uh, addresses those infrastructure, education, uh, quality of life needs that are out there. It's important that we make sure that we have a state where we're taking care of all citizens. Um, when we don't take care of our citizens, those present long-term challenges for the state. There are mixed effects of the, of the reform overall. We see slightly more economic activity, but we need to be more careful about thinking about the distributional effects. One aspect that we need to take into account in this is how the decreases in, in tax revenues are being accompanied by these tax reforms, how that's going to affect the provision of public services. And as we cut spending to these services, that's actually going to be regressive in the sense that these individuals or, or, or households are going to be hurt more by, by this tax reform. Well, I think there's an absolute feedback between academic researchers being able to interact and learn from practitioners and policymakers. It can inspire their work, it can increase their knowledge of what's going on in the real world, and that can power their research. And the outcome of their research can then go back and be used to hopefully influence policies. I got lots of research ideas. There were points of view and aspects of tax that even though I live and breathe tax all the time, I had not considered those things. This is the first conference that I've gotten exposure to that it actually blends practitioners, tax executives, government, academia. It is unique. Well, we hope that there will be some action steps that come out of a conference like this. If you get people talking, that's the first step. And I noticed during the breaks in between the different sessions that people have been talking about, and they're not talking about golf, they're talking about tax reform and the issues that were discussed in the prior meeting. So that, that to me is a good sign. Having a, a great diverse uh, attendee base, I think it just lends itself to a, a great conversation that I think can actually move the trajectory of our state.